Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> before we begin, you should know that the story you're about to hear has quite a number of... Um... Um... Well... Don't say I didn't warn you. has arrived. Oh, he's alive. And he's hungry. Yeah, needs tomato sauce. Oh, wait a minute. The story doesn't start that way. Ah, yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Ayo, let's begin at the beginning. Good for you. I'm not deaf. Right, just dumb. You jerk. Lunatic. Dan Murray, the boss has assigned this story to the two of us. If you don't come into the theater with me and do your part... So, you don't think you can do it alone? I think I'm more than capable. You don't say. Dan Murray, I'm going to go into that theater and write a Pulitzer Prize story by myself. You hear me? You're gonna leave me out here in the cold in the dead of autumn? I hope you freeze. Hmm, how can I keep myself warm? Hey, yo, Dan. It was fabulous. I did so many interviews that we're gonna have to ask the boss for more space. Fitz Randolph, Professor Fly, Chrome Ha, Eva Morte, the poet, the Grim Reaper, and uh, the short guy from Monster Without a Cause. Fascinating. Yeah, you know, the one from... Uh, hey, what's that? It's antifreeze. Dan Murray, have you been out here drinking while I was in there doing your <sighs> job? <clears throat> That's it. The byline is going to be mine and mine alone. They can fire you for all I care. Mm -hmm. What's more, if they ask me for a shovel to help dig your grave, I'll be more than happy to help. And if... Hey, what's he up to? Hmm. Big Albert. In Fitzrandall's office. That's odd. <gasps> you were saying? We have to go in there. My thoughts exactly. Finally, real investigative journalism. Come on, move it. Sweetheart. My thing is sports writing. If he hits you with a baseball bat, call me. And that's how it all started for Liz Allaire. She decided she was going into that office with or without Dan's help. Jerk. Hey, yo, Dan. So how are you doing? Better than you, my dear. When the boss finds out who did all the interviews, you're going to be in hot water. 
You won't find out. Liz Allaire's no stool pigeon. Or is she? Sometimes I blurt out things without meaning to. You wouldn't dare. Try me. So, what exactly did you do wrong? I met you. You must have done something wrong for the boss to take you off your beloved sports section and put you on the society beat. Um, did you have a thing going with the boss's wife? That witch? I'd sooner have a thing with you... with anybody. Maybe you're a lousy writer and the boss wants you to learn from me. Go on, stay in your own little world, my dear. Reality doesn't agree with you. The boss is sick of your chronic lack of discipline. He's been sick of me for years. It's gotten to be his default state. Actually, I could care less what you did. Fascinating. I wonder what Big Albert is doing in Fitz Randolph's office. No, don't tell me. You mean you still haven't found out? Liz Allaire, the famous investigative journalist. What pitiful results. Do you want to hear the story of Big Albert? I know it. I don't need you to... Big Albert, previously known as The Creature, reanimated by Electroshock, and assembled using body parts from the cadaver of an unlucky bodybuilder and the brain of the greatest scientist of our time. He created his own line of clothing and accessories four years ago. Nobel Prize in Medicine three years ago, Nobel Prize in Philosophy two years ago, Nobel Peace Prize last month. I'm finished. Lately, there's been a lot of monsters doing strange things. Am I right? Frankie Dogface Bowser disappeared for three days and came back with his face surgically altered. Now he's ten years uglier. Seventy in dog years. This thing with Big Albert could be a scoop. The most intelligent man in the world caught red-handed. The Quill's rubber room reporter tells all in an exclusive. You're a real people person, aren't you? But the quota is filled, my dear. Try again next season. Jerk. Lunatic. What were we talking about? Ah, yes. Careful with the antifreeze, it makes your complexion look all pasty. A jab to the left, it's pumpkin punch. A jab to the right, have you been drinking antifreeze? No way. I just rubbed a little on my face, it was cold. I hope you freeze. To your health. What's in the trunk, Dan? For you, the unknown. Not so, because I don't want to open it. Better for you, because I wasn't going to let you. Then everyone's happy. Extremely. Good. Good. Dan won't let me open it, the jerk. Once got my head caught under the hood of my father's car. Anne Marie, my smart sister, was being Tarzan. Queenie, my pretty sister, was Jane. I was Cheetah, and the car was the crocodile. I don't like to play with crocodiles. It's enormous, but it was completely full for the ceremony. Tabby the Third, Fitz Randolph's pet, is inside. You're awfully crabby, Tabby. I was going to pet him, but he blew it.
Hey, yo, short stuff. I knew you'd come. Take me with you. Where? To the great beyond, to my final resting place, to eternal peace. No way, never on the first date. Are you not my Grim Reaper, the angel of death, the bearer of the scythe, the stealer of souls? Ah, oh, now I know who you're talking about. It's a guy with hiccups who's still at the party, quite elderly. I'm Liz, and you? Phil, my time has not come. It never comes. Have you seen Big Albert? I have seen things you can't imagine. I've seen ivy grow higher on the wall. I've seen lightning bugs shining in the darkness near the door to the mansion. I've seen all this and much more, all of which will disappear in time. But Big Albert, no. Let's talk about you. I've never seen you before. What do you do? Pull petals off the daisy of existence. I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm dying. And what work do you do while you're pulling the petals off the daisy of existence? Gardening. I plant. I water. I cut fence posts with the saw. I observe how everything decays in the relentless march of time. What's behind this door? My tool shed, my greenhouse, my veil of tears. Do you want to go in? Never on the first date. Disconcerting. Why are you here doing nothing? I'm not. I'm dragging myself toward the inevitable bitter end. Hmm, what do you do here, apart from dragging yourself toward the inevitable bitter end? Lots of drunkards on the loose. They step on the grass. Hollow men crushing lilies underfoot in the land of death. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna get any good headlines out of you. Are you feeling sad? Sadness is the only real name of that which you call life. Hey, yeah, we'll talk later. If we don't expire first. Hi, oh, miss. I thought you were going. Mr. Fitzrandolph. Now, come and sit beside me, Miss Allaire. I never imagined you were such a party girl. Me? Oh, no. I'm still here because it's so pleasant here, don't you think? Uh, you don't need an excuse, miss. My friend Murray's intern is always welcome. Oh. Actually, I was referring to your unusual style of dancing. Oh, I see. Have I offended you? Yes. No. Maybe. It's just that... How is it that you're sitting here by yourself? I love parties, but when you get to be my age... Since I'm the host, I can't go to bed. But at least here, it's quiet. In our interview earlier, I forgot to ask you... Do you get along with the stars of your super productions? Well, I try to be a good employer, but it's not always easy. Fame goes to their heads. They do strange things.
Big Albert has... Yes? Yes what? Big Albert, what about him? Uh, is he feeling all right? Miss, if this keeps up, I will end up understanding why they call you Looney Liz. How's business going? Support your answer. MKO is still the largest movie studio in the country and the world. We have made horror movies fashionable. And as long as that continues, nothing can touch us. Donations, foundations, charity events. Do you have any time left for yourself? <laughs> I'm just doing my part for the less fortunate, miss. Without the little people below, the, the cream, cream of society, society would sink to, to the, the bottom. bottom. How did you know I was going to say that? I didn't. Disconcerting. Horror movies have allowed monsters to gain acceptance in society. Are you proud of that? Not completely accepted, miss. It's true that we aren't persecuted anymore and that we finally have the same rights as everybody else, but unfortunately, there are still many minds to change. So many people judge other people by their appearance. Thank you for your time. I'm nobody's intern. Oh, pardon me. It's just that you're so young and Murray is so... so you know what I mean, uh, so Murray. Dan is a sports writer. How do you know him? I'll only say one thing. The Los Angeles Freaks. Uh. I'm the owner. How nice. The baseball team, miss. I bought it years ago, and Murray comes to all the games. Why does everyone like Dan? I don't want to seem arrogant, but Murray is like me. We're both self-made men, and we both have kept our common touch. Dan's a jerk. You are very hard on him, and I think I know why. Do you find him attractive? But how dare you? Do you know that I once knocked over a refrigerator with my head? Do you think you're better than a refrigerator? And it was full at the time. 20, 12, 1, 4. <sighs> it really is very pleasant here, isn't it? Dan's not worth talking about so much. What about my style of dancing? Well, you're not accustomed to dancing in public. I've never danced in public, but I look quite good in the mirror. Then don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If I hadn't believed in myself when I was young, I wouldn't be where I am today. Are you insinuating that I'm not a good dancer? No, although society may not be prepared to see a woman move so many parts of her body so rapidly and with so much independence with respect to the rhythm. Aha! I'm a feminist. Vegetable soup. I don't understand. Do you want some? What? 
vegetable soup. Huh, what's in it? Disconcerting. Now, where were we? I'm gonna take a walk. Uh, just one thing, miss. As you're probably already aware, I know some of the best doctors in the country, including psychiatrists. I have a cousin who's a veterinarian. Mm. <laughs> I've observed that, that you sometimes say disconcerting things. Yes, I've done a lot of reading. Uh, yes, yes, of course. It's, um, take the vegetable soup, for example. Poor thing. Haven't you had dinner? Yes. Uh, no, no, I, I won't keep you any longer. Cons, I can't go into the hall that leads to Fitz Randolph's office while he's right there next to it. Pros, he gets along with Dan. This is the idea. Bad idea. Good. Bad. Jerk. Lunatic. Dan Murray, are you telling me that you do not intend to go into the mansion or to get Fitz Randolph away from the hall? In a nutshell. Well, okay then. Okay. Good. Good. But Liz Allaire was not a woman to give up easily and she decided to convince Dan to get Fitz Randolph away from the hall. Hey, yo, Dan, so how are you doing? Better than you, my dear. Why don't you help me get Fitz Randolph away from the hall? Because I bet half my salary on the fight tonight, and in a little while they'll be announcing the winner. That's no excuse. Come on, I only need you for five minutes. It's a shame that I can't help you. A real shame. You bet money on a fight. Tell me more. Jim Bad Blood Dixon against Ron Hellman Pearl Boy. Small potatoes, at least compared to next Friday. You missed the fight because they sent you here as punishment. Do you confirm that? That's not the worst. Mr. Boss, set it up so they won't let me into the stadiums, racetracks, and arenas. They turn the faucet off. Gosh, I can't miss Friday. Manny Hammerboy Brown against Rico the Italian Stallion Sandretti. I would do anything to be there. Let's change the subject. What do you have against me? Not a thing. Not even that you're a daddy's girl. Not even that you're a novice. Not even that Mr. Boss thinks you have talent. Not even that you hate sports. Not even that you're crazy. Not even that you're impossible to work with. Not a single, solitary thing. So, what exactly did you do wrong? The ball's in your court, my dear. Um, did you have a thing going with the boss's wife? That witch? I'd sooner have a thing with y with anybody. Maybe you're a lousy writer and the boss wants you to learn from me. Go on, stay in your own little world, my dear. Reality doesn't agree with you. I don't like you. What did you say? That I don't like you. Sort of. Oh, it sounded like, uh, uh, it must be the punch. Actually, I could care less what you did. Fascinating. No matter how much you try, you won't guess. Even if you did, it wouldn't help you anyway. I hope you freeze. To your health. So, short stuff, you guarding the stairs? Restricted area. Only person authorized, William A. Fitz Randolph. Don't worry, I'm not trying to go up. Fitz Randolph's private quarters are up there, right? Restricted area.
What happens if I go up the stairs? I punch you. I have good manners because I went to finishing school. How about you? Negative. Well, it's been a pleasure. See you later. Negative. Hey, yo, short stuff. I don't have anything against your brother over there, but I bet you're the nice one in the family, aren't you? Restricted area. Only person authorized. William A. Fitz Randolph. I see. Let me go up, short stuff. Restricted area. Cat got your language chip? Negative. Fill in the blanks. Her mother gave her a basket to take to her granny, but she should have been more careful because in the... Restricted area. ...lived the wolf, who was an animal with a rather... Negative. ...disposition, and so she went into her granny's... Restricted area. ...and would have met a really... Negative. ...fate if a woodcutter had not said to the wolf... I punch you. Well, it's been a pleasure. See you later. Negative. Solaire, could you confirm that the reading room is being remodeled? Confirmed. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Nice painting. What a place to leave books! My father once caught me my backside. I'm not going up. I can't go while Fitzrandolph is sitting right there. Or Edgar, what are you doing at the window? Hey, Al, weren't you going? Oh, sometimes I'm going and sometimes I'm coming. What are you doing at the window? Shall I take your jacket again? I'm going to be coming and going. What are you doing at the window? Rehearsing. Ah, oh, you've been cast in a movie? Mm, no, just rehearsing for the sake of rehearsing. Fit my looks? Nobody can believe I'd be competent as a monster in front of the camera. Out-of-work actor, coat check attendant, obvious synergies. They don't let you play monsters? No, with my looks, I don't scare anyone. At the auditions, I don't even get to act. They send me packing as soon as they lay eyes on me. been working for Fitz Randolph? About a month. He pays well, and he's nice. What type of work are you doing right now? A little of everything. Maintenance, basically. I do whatever needs doing. And Fitz Randolph can't give you a recommendation? No, that would compromise his integrity. He gives his producers and directors complete artistic freedom and never interferes in things like casting. Was your appearance this original when you were a boy? Yes, 
from day one. I was born in a beautiful and absolutely ordinary place with your typical farm animals. Why did I turn out peculiar? Your guess is as good as mine. Themes of Mother Nature. Enough said. Let's move on. I like books. Who does the one on the table belong to? <laughs> to me, for autographs. I've gotten them from all the celebrities at the party. <sighs> Except for Hammer Boy Brown. 20, 12, 1, 4. I don't understand. Why did you say that? To help myself relax. It works every time. Go on, rehearse. I'll watch you. I'm on it. So now he's into rehearsing. Poor thing. Don't you threaten me. Edgar's autograph book. I don't need any autographs. No, doesn't need... It's Blue Harrelson, the star of Vulcan Flash and the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, who disappeared without a... Wait a minute. Edgar! You are Vulcan Flash. <laughs> I wish. Seriously, you could pass for him. Now you have a job. Blue, strange eyes, dressed like this. Impossible. I'm very grateful to you, but no. Maybe it was out of generosity or stubbornness, or just because she happened to feel like it. But Liz decided that very night she would convince Edgar of his future as Vulcan Flash. For that, her uh, original mind came up with a mental image that she decided to call the Complete Alien Kit which she would equip with everything required for this altruistic goal. It contains everything needed to transform the user into the new Vulcan Flash. Well, it will contain it all. It's still not complete. Hmm, these could be Professor Flies. Large cans of white paint and little ones with blue pigment. The cans of pigment weigh less. Did the workers leave this behind? 
If there was anything in the pocket, someone got here before me and took it. I can see well enough that I don't need these. This doesn't need p I don't want to change it. I don't need glasses to see. I don't want to... I can see well enough. Yes, 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 yes! The effect is positively alien. On second thought, the color blue is a fundamental characteristic of the Great Vulcan Flash. Agreed. He's not exactly the guy in the poster, but close enough. If I'm not mistaken, my complete alien kit is ready for action. Can you confirm that for me, Miss Allaire? Confirmed. The alien kit is complete. Finally, the moment has arrived for opening the refrigerator. There's my Edgar. You talking to me? I am going to put an end to your sad life. Exciting, huh? No, I don't understand. Oh, Edgar, don't you see the Vulcan Flash poster? I am identical to him, the new Vulcan Flash. Next audition, I'm going straight to the top. Thank you for convincing me, Liz, Edgar continued. I'll make it in the movies as an alien. Yes, 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 this is all very well and good. But ask me about what's-his-name Brown's jacket. Oh, no, the jacket. Where is it? Put away. I was afraid you'd drip on it when you drank the pigment. You think of everything. And this is where you tell me I get to keep it. You're right. I suppose I that's suppose the least that's I can do for you, Liz. the least I can do for you, Liz. Mm? How, How did, did you know you what know I, was, what going I to was going to say? I had no idea. And now I'm telling you to go back to rehearsing, okay? I'm on it. He's in such a hurry. And I haven't even told him. Could there be anything in the pockets? Ah, look, how convenient. Dan, have you seen me eat paper? Can't say I've had the pleasure. Watch. I have here two pieces that say... Rico, the Italian Stallion's Andretti versus 
Manny, Hammerboy Brown. Give them to me. Fitz Randolph, away from the hall. Now. Hey, Willie. Murray, my friend. You doing good? Uh, better than you. When are we gonna get together, throw a few punches? Well, I'd like to throw back a drink. I see you're empty. <laughs> what a guy. And that was how Liz convinced Stan to get Fitz Randolph away from the hall. Now I can. Is he asleep? Good. Closed. Life is like a crocodile. Wait a minute. Aren't the offices of Fitz Randolph and his secretary connected? Even if they are. Sparky, the Vulcanian sheep. Vulcan Flash's faithful pet. It's a still photograph from the sinister caped light bulb. A huge hit for MKO. Spencer McDundee. He's actually Australian, but for some reason he's good at playing Scottish ghosts. Yo, short stuff. Hey, yo. Nice night. Considering that at this time of year... You open office doors, right? Affirmative. Considering that at this time of year, it usually cools... What's your name, sweetheart? Jimmy Love. It usually cools down. But autumn, as you know, comes late and all. Look, Jimmy, I'm not going to ask you to open Fitz Randolph's office. Only authorized subject, William A. Fitz Randolph, late and all at once. But his secretary's yes, okay, sweetheart? Only authorized subject, Beverly Torrance. Hair blonde, eyes blue, bust 50, waist 24. Hips, 36. Negative identification. Access denied. Access denied? Liz said to herself. We'll just see about that. Aren't you the charmer? Integrated elevator conversation chip. We'll have to start dressing more warmly. Informational topic unit. Doors. Open the first door for me. I have never opened it. It's not possible. Jammed. Maybe it's the humidity. A lot of humidity these last few winters. Open the second door. Only 
unauthorized subject, Beverly Torrance. Hair blonde. Eyes blue. Bust 50. Waist 24. Hips 36. Negative identification. Access denied. Open the third. Ac but I was in here just last month when I interviewed your boss. It was a lovely morning, but it drizzled in the afternoon. The weather is crazy. Who is Beverly Torrance? Beverly Torrance, secretary, authorization, door two. Although at this time of year, you know how it is. If you dress warmly, sunshine, and if not, you freeze to death. Informational topic unit closed. Are you sleepy? Power conservation mode, low on oil. Isn't the autumn sun splendid? It is to be believed because it is absurd, Tertullian. Disconcerting. I don't understand. That is the path. I don't understand, but I believe. I don't understand, but I don't understand. Hey, yeah, time for bed, sweetheart. It's half full. How strange. Being Dan's, I expected to find a trunk full of old, dirty, worthless junk. But apart from this empty oil can and a baseball bat, there's nothing. Not even the unknown. Great idea! Pumpkin punch in a can of more oil. Anyone care for some? Pumpkin punch, Jimmy? I'd like to, but Mr. Fitz Randall will fire me if he sees me drinking. He only lets us drink oil so that we don't rust. He's in the ballroom. He won't see you. No, no, no. I don't dare. He could show up at any moment like a summer thunderstorm. Don't worry. I'll figure out something else. But you'll have your punch. I bet you can't guess what's inside this oil can. Affirmative. Suddenly, everything is like cloudy. The weather is just crazy. Jimmy. Nice night. Open the second door for me. On the authorized subject, Reverend Florence. Her eyes, eyes, blue. Bust 50. 
And that was how, with the help of the pumpkin punch, Liz got Jimmy Love to open the door to the secretary's office. Thanks, sweetheart. Fitz Randolph Mansion, Halloween night. My exclusive interview with Big Albert. Hey, you, Albert. Liz Allaire of the Quill. Huh? Four questions. Twenty. Can you <laughs> tell me your motive for sneaking into the magnate Fitz Randolph's office? Twelve. What's that in your hand? One. Are the rumors that say you're a kleptomaniac true, or did I just invent that to get under your skin a bit? <laughs> Four. Are you listening? Now, give this to the immaterial man. Hurry. Poor Liz. For once, fortune seemed within reach, only to elude her. On the other hand, if she had managed to get into Fitz Randolph's office, she would only have solved the mystery surrounding Big Albert after reading that note. She's not altogether ugly. Too many curves. It's Eva Marte, the dark lady. She's evil, perverse, and bad as they come. It's strange that Fitz Randolph has such an obsolete model. After all, he bankrolls the inventions of Professor Fly, who's designed more advanced phonographs than this. Garden, dock, and on the other side of the lake, the studios. It reminds me of Stacy, my first babysitter, but in window form. If I want the notebook, I'll have to think of something. Because I can see that if I stick my hand in there, I'm gonna lose it. in there with the notebook that Big Albert threw away after tearing out a sheet for Phil. Phil, sweetheart! You can't deny it. You have seen Big Albert. Why deny the obvious? Why try to avoid the unavoidable?
Do you have Big Albert's note? No, I ran into the immaterial man in the hall and I gave it to him. Everything meets its end sooner or later. Do you know what the note said? Why bother if we're all going to die anyway? Do you know which way Big Albert went? Yes, he went out that... that... I... don't... know. Why should I pay attention to anything if everything is superfluous? Which way did the immaterial man go? There's only one possible destination. Nothingness. Non-existence. Death. Clearly, you don't know anything. The only certainty in life is the tomb. Let's talk about you. And what work do you do while you're pulling the petals off the daisy of existence? Gardening. I plant, I water, I cut fence posts with the saw. I observe how everything decays in the relentless march of time. What's behind this door? My tool shed, my greenhouse, my veil of tears. Do you want to go in? Never on the first date. Disconcerting. Hmm, what do you do here, apart from dragging yourself toward the inevitable bitter end? Lots of drunkards on the loose. They step on the grass. Hollow men crushing lilies underfoot in the land of death. I'm sorry, I'm not going to get any good headlines out of you. Me, I'm not going to expire. Um, it just doesn't interest me. Bad choice. If you do expire, fine, but... And if you don't? Hey, yeah, we'll talk later. If we don't expire first. That's where the ball is, but it's dying down now. After the way they all laughed when I started dancing, I prefer not to go in. Hey, there's something on it. A crank handle. Luck, not even chewed on. It's strange that Fitz Randolph has such an obsolete model. Fitz Randolph is clever. One turn of the phonograph crank, and the table, part of the floor, and the wall turn, and this appears. Listen to what I'm telling you, Liz. The rose-colored bed. William A. Fitz Randolph's Dirty Laundry. A Liz Allaire exclusive. Forget it. The gossip rags don't interest me.
an ice bucket, tongs, and a can of caviar. Expensive caviar. My sister, Anne-Marie, the smart one, uses it to make sandwiches. And the magic word for today is caviar. <sighs> but the real magic would be if something was written on it. Warehouse, ASAP. When she finally found out what Big Albert's note said, Liz headed to Fitz Randolph's storeroom, located behind the mansion. To the warehouse, then. Hopefully Big Albert and Immaterial Man are still there. I'll turn on my tape recorder. is safe and sound now. We'll simply bury the rest. Lights out. At noon the following day, Dan was awakened by a ringing telephone. It was his boss. Liz and Dan hadn't shown up at the paper that day, and uh, he was, how can I put it, pretty angry. I won't tolerate another screw-up. You hear me, Mr. Murray? You know, you don't understand it. If the story about last night's award ceremony doesn't make the Sunday edition, you and Mr. Mayor are going to be in hot water. Is that clear, Murray? Very, very hot water, he screamed down the phone. Reluctantly, Dan went back to Fitzrandolph's mansion. Edgar told him that Liz had been seen going into the storeroom, where she evidently was no longer. Finding out what had happened to his beloved colleague was not going to be that easy. Beloved, my foot. Los Angeles Stadium, Friday night. Manny Brown, Rico Sandretti. That's what counts. <laughs> <laughs>